Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Text Messages. Uh, today we're not going to do any of that introduction stuff. we got a very serious topic to discuss here. So we need to get right into it. So this topic today is about water safety, water health mostly. Now, by water health, it's not implying that you need to put off as much bleach and fluorine in the water as possible and arsenic cyanide as I can be. It means that you have water that's consistent with, with what the human body desires. Now, you have the option of rainwater, well water, city water, urine water, pond water, toilet water. So we generally try to focus on well water and rainwater because those are the two most critically healthy aspects of human consumption. Now, it's very challenging to say which one is better than the other. So probably the best bet is to do approximately 50-50. But for the most part, it's more convenient to do well water. So we're just going to discuss that today, ladies and gentlemen. So pretty much everybody has a water softener in the house. What the water softener does is it replaces minerals like calcium and magnesium with sodium. So the magnesium is an absolute necessity to your body and to function properly. It's an it's a enzyme e activator and all that stuff. In fact, we have a study from the American Journal of Epidemiology. It's at McCordResearch.com. They did a study where magnesium in drinking water and death from acute myocardial infarction. What that means is of the heart, and infarction means it dies off. So myocardial is the middle muscular layer of the heart wall. And what they found, they, they studied seven municipalities in Sweden. The people were 50 to 69 years old. The odds ratio of death was inversely proportional to the level of magnesium in the drinking water. So the group with the highest magnesium had an odds ratio of 0.65. That means they had that much lesser of a chance to die than those with the uh, average magnesium content. And those with lower magnesium content had a higher odds ratio of dying. Maybe it was something like 2 to 1 or whatever the case may be. But this suggests that magnesium is important in preventing deaths, mostly for males, from acute myocardial infarction. Hard water is attributed to mostly calcium and magnesium. Magnesium is, enzyme. magnesium is an enzyme activator and is essential for neuromuscular excitability and cell permeability. Now a lot of people who, you know, they're, they're mysteriously tired during certain times of the day or they don't, when they first start exercising, they increase their weight and their reps the first three months. That's mostly because your neuromuscular and nerve cells are more efficient and everything. And to be more efficient, they need the magnesium and the calcium and the potassium and the sodium in a very close ratio. Like for example, if you're outside and your hands are cold, you can barely move them. Not really related to your nutrient content, but it's certainly related to what happens when your nerves aren't working as you expect them to. Now the magnesium is an activator of sodium and potassium and adeno, adeno triphosphate, which is um, ATP. A lot of people who take creatine take it because of that it adds extra ATP or provides that benefit to them and that's directly linked to something that they can tangibly see and feel and everything and that's why they swear towards creatine as opposed to all those other phony supplements out there so it's an enzyme that is necessary for the transportation of sodium and potassium across cell membrane and necessary for maintaining the intracellular concentrations of potassium Low levels of magnesium can induce artery spasms and facilitate the development of arrhythmias, which is alteration of the heartbeat. Significantly low levels have been found, uh, have been found in the uninfarcated heart muscle of persons who died of ischemic heart disease. Ischemic is deficient blood flow due to obstruction or artery of, of due to obstruction of artery. So. But what that basically means is, 
somebody dies from heart disease and they, you know, they inspect their heart and all that stuff, they find that that the people who have died more prevalently, say for example, 100 people die, so they might see that 80 of them have a low level of magnesium in the infarcated heart, and 20 of them have high magnesium. So that's an indicator that if you have low magnesium, there's a 4 to 1 probability of death from the lack of magnesium inside inside your system. So that, that's basically what they're concluding there, ladies and gentlemen. So magnesium can be found in certain foods like spinach, nuts, quinoa, oats, broccoli, seeds, cooked cacao, dark chocolate. Relations have been shown between magnesium and magnesium content in heart, arteries, muscles. Magnesium in water has, high bio, has higher bioavailability as it appears as a hydrated ion which can more easily absorb, be absorbed than magnesium in food. Substances that may reduce the absorption, saturated fat, sugars, phytates, protein, phosphates, calcium. Calcium and magnesium enjoy a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you have something like osteoporosis and you're taking excessive calcium supplements because you feel that that's the issue here, in reality, that would be like if you have a car and you want more horsepower, so you put bigger tires on it. But the, the fact of the matter is potassium and sodium, like magnesium, calcium, they prefer a one-to-one -one ratio because all your cells, that, well, not all of them, but the mitochondrial DNA cells, they have magnesium inside, potassium inside, and then they have sodium and calcium outside. When the calcium and sodium start to penetrate and get inside, that's when you, do, that's when you generally have some problems. Magnesium is estimated to be a cofactor in seven to eight hundred enzymes. In plants, it holds a central position in chlorophyll in the chlorophyll molecule, which allows the transformation of sunlight energy into chemical energy, which is you know the ATP, adeno triphosphate. Calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium are electrolytes that are minerals in the body, which can electrically charge and conduct impulses in the body. An abundance is essential to contract. To control the water, blood acidity, muscle action, and more. When glucose or fat are metabolized, the end product are ATP, water, and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, you breathe it out, the water goes in your body. Hence, humans are about 90% water. Metabolism, metabolism requires oxygen when you breathe it in, protein synthesis for growth and enzyme production, DNA replication, and RNA synthesis. Ions are carefully and meticulously organized in and around cells. Calcium and sodium are outside, magnesium and potassium are inside. When the blocker function is breached and the magnesium-calcium ratios are dis disrupted, several cell malfunctions can occur. Vasoconstriction, arterial stiffness, hypertension, enlargement of the heart, hypertrophy, hy hypertrophy blood platelet aggregation, sticky and clotting, blood, fat, and muscle loss, less responsive to insulin. So hence, type 2 diabetes. Pancreatic cells can increase more insulin, hyperinsulinemia, and osteoporosis can also result. Too much calcium, again, can exacerbate that effect. So that's why when you get well water, ladies and gentlemen, you, you want to tap it off prior to the water softener so that you have that good balance of magnesium and calcium. Now, yeah, obviously you want to test out your well and make sure there's not arsenic and lead and nitrates and all this other weird, goofy stuff in there. So, but, but when you get city water, municipality water, a lot of that is adulterated and they add the bleach, they add the fluorides, they probably, hell, maybe they add Zyklon B, but, but for the most part, that, that water should also be tested too to see what's in there. And you may, I mean, if, if your water has low magnesium in it and you don't have any good source of magnesium, you know, you, maybe you could buy some bottled water from the store and test that to see what their magnesium calcium content is in there and the potassium and sodium and all that good fun stuff. So if you don't have a good source of magnesium, then it's absolutely critical that, that you tackle the, the foods that have the proper amounts of magnesium or at least a good amount of magnesium in them. You know, like the spinach, the cocoa, the nuts, the quinoa, the oats, all that, the broccoli. Just, just good, healthy food that, that comes out of the ground, not from some weird factory farm hydroponic organization that probably sprays synthetic fertilizer all over it. So, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, it is critically important that you have the proper drinking water available in your house for you and your family because magnesium, calcium, absolutely critical. Potassium and sodium is absolutely critical as well. They require... A very consistent ratio too and when you eat foods that have the preservatives preservatives are mostly sodium based so if you eat lots of foods with the preservatives packaged foods then you need to also have the potassium too that can be found in fruits and vegetables um, you know like an orange or a banana a banana has lots of potassium potatoes have lots of potassium broccoli 
um, nuts out a little bit, pistachios have a decent amount, not a lot, but a fair amount. So it's just critically important to, to pay attention to your mineral consumption, ladies and gentlemen, because your body does not synthesize minerals. You know, it, it synthesizes a few vitamins, but it does not synthesize minerals. That's what you get out of the ground. So we're going to put an end to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to get off on any BS tangents here. Very serious topic, magnesium and calcium, vital to your health. Thank you for watching. We salute you.